very warm welcome to all of you to today the world day of peace brought to you by heartfulness and the united nations and supported by the hindustan times group um peace is a it's something that we all yearn for and we all have a different understanding it's peace within all ourselves it's world peace it's a peace of the ecology it's the peace inside your heart uh so this program 1 hour we will talk to various people and they will talk about what peace really means what peace really is uh we'll be talking to students we'll be talking to sportsmen we'll be talking to musicians and we'll be talking to some of the most well known and well researched and people who have been studying spirituality all their lives and they will bring to you a perspective of what world peace is let's hear first from the children because we are born spiritual we are born heartful we are born inquisitive but not separate i feel most peaceful and calm when i am with animals i feel most peaceful when i'm drawing or painting i feel like peaceful around plants cuz like they have a soul like us when i'm riding a bicycle the wind blowing through my hair the greens the flowers i just love them world peace by catherine johnson peace on earth begins with me peace is real it's meant to be we are one big family Peace brings us harmony. I feel peaceful when I'm sleeping. Last week we were working on a project called Living in Peace and Harmony with Nature and Yourself. That's a pretty long name. I agree. We learned a lot by this project. For example, to think and care about nature and nature and other people. If I had 3 wishes, they would be to have peace all over the world. that all children know their rights and that all children have education we don't need war or pollution we need a lot more peace our, our message, message is take care of the children in your country to help them feel as good and safe as possible thank you very much I spent the summer with uh, teenagers and young adults talking and educating them about climate change. And their request was quite simple that us adults listen more to their ideas, to their concerns and what they have to say on the matter. And we started thinking about, you know, why do we know all these facts about what's going on, but we still continue to live our lives. and we came to the conclusion that that is because we lack space between our thoughts to actually reflect on on you know the situation that we lack the peace in other words to take the time to reflect and and think about where we're heading and how we want to build a better world Et depuis des millénaires, nous savons faire la guerre parce qu'on s'y implique, on s'y emploie, on s'y forme, on s'y 
discipline. Eh bien, la paix, c'est pareil. On peut faire la paix si on s'y emploie, si on s'y discipline, c'est de cet ordre-là. Et imaginez simplement la puissance de transformation qu'il y a en nous, en chacun de nous, si chaque enfant qui va à l'école, à côté de lire, écrire et calculer, qui sont les piliers fondamentaux de l'apprentissage, puisse apprendre à savoir qui il est, comment il se sent, qu -ce que, comment il se sent, pardon, quelles sont ses émotions, qu'est-ce que ses émotions disent de lui, quels sont ses talents, comment les mettre joyeusement au service de la vie communautaire. Education for peace, isn't that the most important thing today for the future of humanity and the future of our planet? Today we know that we can teach peace to children. It is actually something that we learn. Gandhi said, be the world you want to see. This is most probably true for peace as well. Let's be the peace we want to live with ourselves, with others, and also with the planet. Music and nature has always been one and the same. And also I found a very deep connect with nature as a child. When, when my friends and relatives would, you know, would run away from seemingly dangerous and creepy crawly animals like snakes and reptiles and rodents, I was always very drawn towards them. And I would look into their eyes. I would try to see personality in every single animal. And from a very young age, it has always been uh, that, uh, you know, it's, it's never been, uh, you know, their world and my world. I've always looked at it as being our world. And that's how I grew up. Because if you look at uh, the word coexistence itself, uh, you know, coexistence is such a, uh, such a vague term and yet a vast term. When we think about coexistence or the world is one family, the only thing that comes to our mind is living in peace and harmony between Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Christians, Jews, uh, you know, the Buddhists, basically different parts of the human race because, you know, somewhere along our journey, we've completely forgotten that we are not the only species on this planet. You know, we are just one among millions and millions of species on this planet and uh, living in absolute coexistence with, uh, with every single entity, whether living or non-living, is key to our own survival. You know, there is different kind of arts. If you're a painter, you work mostly alone. My wife is a painter, I know that, you know. You work mostly alone and you don't collaborate so much. If you're an actor, you collaborate, but you don't talk together. You speak one after the other. You know, one actor will say something, the other actor will say something. In music, we are truly blessed uh, because we speak together. You know, we sing together. I've, I've discussed with Shashank about harmony, for example. As you know, harmony is a European parameter of music. It has been developed here in Europe. And it makes a whole lot of difference for playing together because even as a kid you learn if you play an instrument with one note, let's say a flute or a violin, that's nice. But three kids with three different notes produce harmony, you know, and you learn that at an early age. And then you learn, oh, this is much more than the three notes each one plays alone. It's a new quality, it's harmony. And this is only possible by collaboration. And this is why, as a musician, you learn that very, very early, early on, creativity in music arises very, very often from these moments when you collaborate. Imagine you're in a group of four, five, ten, twenty, maybe a hundred people who have this feeling together. You know, this is something you don't forget, never, ever. And then, uh, not only do the musicians will feel that sometimes it happens that the audience feels it too. All of the audience feels it too. That can be hundreds and maybe thousands of people. And this is something, you know, like it's a very, very, very human thing. And uh, uh, this, you know, this should happen every day actually for everybody because This is like the basis of peace also, if we talk about peace. Yeah, yeah. If, all us, if all of us feel this, you know, uh, then we feel together and we, we, tr we start to understand that every one of us has a heart and the liver and the, and the leg and the nose, you know, and probably the same feelings uh, uh, and, and all of this. And uh, to understand this, you know, to feel this empathy is for me the basis of peace. Often getting stuck to one genre uh, does bring about a lot of uh, 
limitations uh, even in the thought process it is so important for people to collaborate um, at a final level and also have have the openness to learn and uh, appreciate uh, what the other is trying to do that's a very important aspect of collaboration and that is what uh, teaches you the most because uh, you don't want to be also in a thought process where you drag the other one towards your direction of collaboration a collaboration often means how you learn about the idea behind the others and they learning your idea behind what you are trying to present and then amalgamating the two uh, together which can you know bring about a, a fantastic piece of music or whatever so i think collaborations um, have been a major part of my life and uh, i have uh, learned so much uh, working with mike uh, you know as he said i think it will also improve the harmony between human beings uh, which ultimately results in peace i'd say that that sense of distance and and disconnection is an illusion that we cannot afford uh our world is becoming so small and so interconnected that all of our big problems are global problems they're problems for all of us um so just as a matter of self interest we have to care but i think at a deeper spiritual level if you believe as i do that every person is a sacred being that the earth is a sacred gift we have to care we have to love and uh the sense of distance is just illusory uh and i'd say that can seem daunting uh if you confront all of these challenges but i don't think it has to be in fact i think it can be joyful uh and where i'd start there is to say none of us can do everything but all of us can do something and if enough of us do something it adds up to a comprehensive global effort to address all of these problems don't focus on the separation focus on the connection and i'll just close by saying one of the wonderful things the silver linings of this pandemic experience is we're all getting much more comfortable connecting like this connecting virtually uh and we're learning that it's as easy to make a new friend on the other side of the world as it is on the other side of town and that knitting together of a global network of loving relationships is the key to peace peace means simply love well-being harmony harmony in my heart harmony in my entire physical body and beyond it it is also harmony in my neighborhood in everything around me it is therefore a state of being that cannot be affected by fear no matter what May I ask one question to footballer of your caliber when there is so much of competition in the football world how do you reconcile competition and peace in your heart Yo creo que el calcio eh sea un sport con que que porta de valori sportivi positivi y creo que en cuesto noi abbiamo una grandissima responsabilità calciatori dirigenti tutti quelli che fanno parte de, del mondo del, del calcio eh, y el nuestro comportamiento eh, sia dentro que fuera del campo eh, debe andar en questa dirección eh, va bene que c'è una finale una competición una partita importante pero cuando finisce la partita anche durante la partita Eh, dobbiamo essere sportivi 
y achetar las confitas a la escuadra que Magari ha perso. ¿Por qué? Porque en definitiva siempre un, un sport. So what is your message today when we are trying to promote peace, world peace? What would you say to youth today? El mio messaggio soprattutto è de... sempre de... prima di tutto ai giovani di credere in se stessi, de... de non smettere mai di sognare, eh, di cercare sempre la strada eh, giusta, la strada quella che, che, che ti porta dove dietro c'è una grande cultura del lavoro ad avere dei successi, sempre, sempre rispettando i veri valori umani, perché io sono convinto che i valori umani, o umani sono quelli che fanno la differenza, perché uno può essere più bravo che, che l'altro, però la differenza la fanno le persone e i valori che riescono a, a trasmettere. E soprattutto in questa, in questa bellissima iniziativa, eh, cercare ognuno di noi alla, alla maniera che uno lo sente trasmettere questo serenità, armonia eh, in un mondo che, che sappiamo che è difficile che è complicato dove ci sono tanti conflitti tanti soprattutto conflitti di interessi però sempre dobbiamo tornare alle radici, alla base che sono quelle che, che ha l'essere umano che quando le tira fuori fanno veramente la differenza Thank you, thank you a honor, a pleasure for me to be part of the very, very important yes. initiative in the world. Thanks Thank for you. the invitation. Thank you. Well, football has taken me all over the world. 3.5 billion people of us love football. World leaders, toddlers, tribes in the Amazon, youth, your friends, our friends. Football brings people together. In the professional game, on the terraces, in parks, in back gardens, scrublands, playgrounds, conflict zones, anywhere big enough to kick a ball around. And because it brings people together from all backgrounds, religions and countries, it creates friendships, bonds and breaks down barriers between people and creates natural core shared values. Allora, io, lo vivo, io il valore della pace lo vivo in due modi. Diciamo che ho due aspetti di me. Ho eh, un aspetto agonistico che tante volte mi mette in competizioni, in sfida con gli altri e di conseguenza eh, c'è questa rivalità, ma allo stesso tempo mi piace andare d'accordo con tutti, mi, mi piace anche con gli avversari chiacchierare, eh, ridere, anche avere momenti di condivisione, quindi la vivo un po' in questo modo la, la gara, la vivo eh, sia con, eh, con la voglia di battere gli altri ma anche con la voglia di andarci d'accordo, quindi la pace con loro la vivo in questo modo, la vivo come una sorta di rivalità ma allo stesso tempo di eh, condivisione, di storie, di eh, esperienza di vita diversa perché comunque gli avversari vengono da, da altri luoghi, hanno altre cose nuove, cose da raccontarti. Ho iniziato quest'autunno il percorso della meditazione e mi è subito piaciuto, mi sono subito trovata bene, ho subito sentito eh, come se fosse un piccolo cambiamento in meglio, cioè di benessere che mi ha dato proprio, proprio dentro di me e alla fine io credo che anche per quello che riguarda il mio sport, cioè noi trasmettiamo se stiamo bene dentro, quindi è cioè, come se eh, riuscissimo a lasciare bene se dentro siamo sereni, se invece una persona magari non è, non è tanto serena o agitata o cosa, alla fine lo trasmettiamo anche sugli sci e quindi di conseguenza anche i risultati possono variare anche in base a questa cosa. About 50 years ago, the Beatles came back from India and brought back Maharish, Mahesh Yogi's message about meditation. 
He proclaimed that if 10% of our population could meditate, we would find peace in this world. He taught TM, Transcendental Meditation Theory, but the idea of meditation came to me at a young age and I pursued it. And over the years, I've used it in a variety of forms for my own personal ability to find peace and also to find some kind of relief or unity from the tensions that build in the programs that I was running while a basketball coach with the Chicago Bulls and the Los Angeles Lakers. We talked about one mind, one breath. The idea of being here now, not mind being busy, bothered, politically active, seeking for one dimension that we may think is right, but just being peace. Being peace like Thich Nhat Hanh talks about. So today we're trying to bring that message as a group. I encourage you to just sit, breathe, and be peace. Blessings. Premisarula, the <laughs> The impact of having that many people meditating would be extremely positive for me because there will be a power, a strength that would come out from all those different identity who are trying to reach the same goal, the same unity points that I think could uplift the entire world. And what it made me think would be, I would say, a, a drawing, a Picasso drawing that would be this beautiful, um, this beautiful drawing he did of two hands, you know, reaching together. I think this is this notion of because of COVID, we cannot touch each other. And touching is an extremely important sense that is missing. But we can still do the same thing at the same time and being fully connected to a point of our, I would say, our virtual skin can touch one another. And this, all those bodies connected will create one body that will be one humanity body. And, and I think this would really uplift our willingness to simply get to reach one peace and one happiness. I have a car accident and during this car accident I have a near-death experience which means I went out of my body and I have a glimpse of death and death for me was a big liberation to be free from the body and free from the mind and I went to the source, I went to the light and I feel so released, so at peace because I was in the divine consciousness kind of and so I was so happy there I didn't want to go back but the inner guidance say 
welcome. But we just want to tell you, you didn't finish your mission on earth. And I was sent back. And uh, I was sent back, transform, transcend, metamorphose, kind of. And this is where my quest for what is my purpose in life, what is my mission in life, started at the age of 18. And so I, I finished my master's degrees and I did start an internship in Uzbekistan with UNICEF, working on the well-being of kids and also in Tajikistan, working on Afghan refugees. At this time, it was in 2020 years ago already, the Taliban came to the north of Afghanistan and pushing the, the population actually to flee to Tajikistan. And when I met these Afghan refugees, so noble, so hospitable, so at peace despite the conflict, despite the violence, they were just rioting peace. I said, who are these people? They have nothing and they give you everything because they fled with the kids and the cattle and some wheat in the pocket. And with the mud, they did a tondu oven. And with the wheat, they made a beautiful naan, like bread. And just to thank us to come and bring blanket, food, tent, vaccination for the kids, they gave all the bread. And I said, well, I cannot, I cannot eat your bread. You have nothing. And say, this is Afghan hospitality. You should take the bread. Hi, I'm Nadia Nadim. Um professional football player, play for the Danish national team and Paris Saint-Germain in France. Of course, I then had the easy start in life. Um, born in a country, uh, war-torn country. Um, I saw my, my dad uh, being killed, you know, in a really young age and we had to escape for our lives, um, you know, to survive, to, to, to have a life. We, we had to leave the country. We were searching for the peace that we, would, we didn't receive in the country I was born. So for me, inner peace has been like a huge, important thing in my life because things I've experienced as a young child um, is not something that you wish for anyone. And, and if I didn't cope with it and if I didn't find you know, the peace and like kind of accept it, I wouldn't be where I am today everything all the anger and and happiness i had uh, i tried to kind of channel in in football school wherever because as a human being you you cannot have it in you and because that's going to destroy you so i had to stop and, and that's the decision i made myself that i need to find the peace I did. performance and inner peace goes hand in hand you cannot be at your best and perform at the highest level if your brain and your emotions are everywhere. Everything you see around the world, you know, why do we have so much suffering, everything that's happening, the Black Lives Matter, all of this, this, this is not, it's not peace. But I think the key for me is education. You know, you are part of the change and it doesn't take that much. It's just by smiling, saying hello, being kind would go a really long way. We received so many death threats from the Taliban because they were opposed to the democracy. Three of my international colleagues got kidnapped in front of my office. And United Nations say, I might be the next one because we were all working together. So instead, they decided to evacuate me back to France. I asked this crucial question, who I am to work for peace in the world if I'm not at peace with myself first, if I'm completely burned out, if I'm completely depressed, anxious, I should better stay at home. I'm not going to serve the population I came to serve. It's dilemma, say. You cannot bring out of peace if you don't bring peace within yourself first. And when he said this sentence, it resonates so much within myself. And I say, this is what I was looking for. And so I decided to take my backpack and to go all around India to spend time with all the spiritual master who teach inner peace and non-violence, which was life change experience because I realized peace, it's here and now, and your monkey mind is always bring you in the past, in the future, but real peace is when you are fully here and now. 
the UN called me back to come to Afghanistan again to work on the priest process. And I say, oh, really? Do I want to do that to myself? I'm so at peace now. And I call my Afghan colleague and say, yes, you initiate the peace process, democratic expression with your colleague. You should better come back now because the situation is worse. And so I came back. But you know, it completely changed. You went come to pick me up at the airport in an armed vehicle with a um, helmet, with a bulletproof jacket, and they put me like a bunker guest house. And I say, this is not the Afghanistan I used to love. What happened to this country? And so the security situation was worse and worse. So I was always practicing my yoga meditation every day. And my colleagues say, what happened to you? You changed. I said, because now I have my spiritual practice. So did that, they did ask me to start teaching, which I started. And all my Afghan colleagues wanted to come, so I invited at home. Conflict is not the opposite of peace, and peace does not require eliminating all conflict. Often, it is the presence of conflict that can invite us to encounter, to dialogue, to engage our humanness, and to recognize each other as human beings, as a part of a we. With this mutual recognition, we can transform conflict towards innovation and a positive change. Where do we identify peace or peacelessness it really is with our thoughts and we all know when our thoughts move in a certain direction towards things that are difficult for us we don't feel peace at that time that's why the practice of going inside and experiencing the natural peace that is part of our being is just so important at this time. People are searching, people want peace, but I need to take time to find that peace within. And of course, once I touch it, it's like I touch the heart of my being, the soul of who I am. I try to use the term connection for it you know i think it's a powerful powerful sense of connection to ourselves to others and ultimately to all beings everywhere to all of life and uh it doesn't mean that you necessarily like somebody or that you're going to approve of them or want to spend any time with them uh, wisdom in fact may tell you you know stay away <laughs> that's not really that smart uh but but in one's heart we have this sense that uh we are part of this interconnected universe and that the the construct of self and other and us and them which we may use in convenience um and might make sense in certain levels it's just a construct that in truth we are all part of this interconnected world and i sometimes use the example i was driving with a friend uh and we were stuck in this incredible horrible awful traffic and complaining bitterly about it the whole time and at one point my friend said to me well we're the traffic too you know and i thought oh right you know it's like such an odd sense that i own the road it's mine you are an interloper in my way slowing me down but what if that sense of centrality and marginalization falls and it's just us here we are we're all the traffic and and that's very much First of all, it's the truth of things, you know, and, and that's why it's powerful because we are part of this interconnected universe. Somebody sent me a quotation of myself uh, from, I don't know, like 10 years ago or something, which is always an odd thing to see. And uh, in the quotation, I said something which I say a lot, which is that interconnection is not just a spiritual understanding that uh, science shows us this, economic shows us this, environmental consciousness certainly shows us this and even epidemiology shows us this so i have friends who are epidemiologists and so i use that example and people used to say to me what's epidemiology and why are you talking about that and, you know again here we are look at that 
uh, you know, what happens over there doesn't nicely stay over there. It infiltrates our life and what we do, it matters. Where we put our energy, what we care about, what we're devoted to, because it too will infiltrate out along these lines of connection. So loving kindness or metta is the heart's response to that knowing, that deep knowing that our lives are intertwined. Uh, and the corollary of that is that everybody counts and everybody matters. Not everyone will be my best friend, you know, with the person I seek to spend time with, but everybody fundamentally counts. And so we offer loving kindness. It's a, it's a meditative technique to ourselves, to those who've helped us that maybe we take for granted, um, to friends, to those who are having trouble who, who seem full of fear or, or something, some problem. We offer loving kindness to those we hardly know, you know, somebody who plays some role in our life we're normally indifferent to. Uh, we offer loving kindness to those we have difficulty with, not in the sense of may you triumph, but recognizing that our lives are intertwined. And we offer loving kindness to all beings everywhere. The most valid science on the planet is quantum physics. There is no science that has been tested more, verified more. It is the most truthful. If you're going to question a science, don't question quantum physics first. Okay? I say, so why? And now this is the emphasis of why I say this. The first principle of quantum physics, consciousness is creating your life experience. And now all of a sudden I'm saying, guess what? Biology, epigenetics, quantum physics, both say the same thing. Biology and physics come together at this point. People think their thoughts are in their head. And I go, how do you know? Well, I put wires on your head. It's called electroencephalograph. I'm reading what's going on in your head. And then I go, and there's a new device that reads brain function. It's called magnetoencephalograph. And I say, why is that relevant? Because the probe is not in your head. The probe is out here. I go, stop. What the hell does that mean? Just stop. I go, my thoughts are not contained in my head. My thoughts are broadcast into the field. So I am creating a field of consciousness around my head, okay? Uh, and then, now, here's a quote that I always love. This is an Albert Einstein quote. The field is the soul governing agency of the particle. I say, what does that mean? The field is the invisible energy around us. The particle is the expression of energy as matter, okay? It's not real matter, it's an energy, okay? Because everything is energy, quantum physics, okay? But what does it say? The field, the invisible energy, is the sole governing agency of that particle. So I say, that. what does it mean? I say, your thoughts are a field and it's shaping this particle called the body. That's quantum physics. So one day I was walking down the beach. There was a little wind blowing. And suddenly, as the wave came in, a drop of water flew off the wave and came and settled on my finger. And I had a conversation with a drop of water that came on my finger and I said, hello ocean, and the drop said, oh, what do you mean ocean? I said, you just came on my finger, you're the ocean. And the drop said, no, I'm not the ocean. I'm a drop, I have individuality. And I said, what do you mean you have individuality? What's your individuality? He said, look, I was just born. I was born in Sheikha Kapoor's finger. I was born off Juhu Beach. I was part of a wave that was about to hit the beach. I was born in the sea that is around Juhu Beach, which everybody says is very polluted. This particular time I was born and I said, but you're just a drop. And the drop got really upset with me. I said, what do you mean I'm just a drop? I'm an individual. And suddenly the wind whipped up again and I flicked my finger and the drop fell back into the ocean and I said, Hey, drop, how are you? Where are you? And the ocean roared at me and said, What drop? I am the ocean. And that's a constant conflict. 
Are we the ocean or are we the drop? Purity, peace, power, love, happiness, knowledge, and bliss. This is one folder which is common on every soul. Ask anyone, what do you want? And everyone has the same answer. I want peace. I want happiness. I want love. I want wisdom. I want happiness. I want bliss. Everyone wants the same. Even someone who is contemplating war is actually doing it for peace. You ask them, why are you fighting? Why are you doing all this? They say, we want peace. So everyone wants the same same vibration because that's the original nature of every soul. And that's why we understand the drop and the ocean. Each one is an individual drop, but we are carrying the same quality as the ocean. And the ocean is the supreme power, the ocean of love, the ocean of purity, the ocean of bliss, the ocean of powers. That is the supreme power. And each one of us is the soul which carries the same qualities as the supreme soul. But on the journey of lives and many lives, we created so many other sanskars and we're using them in our life. And we forget to use those seven sanskars out of that original folder. And because we forget, we actually think that we want peace. We want happiness. We want love. We want power. We're looking for all these seven qualities outside, which are our original nature. So when we say peace, creating peace in the world, how will we create peace in the world? It's very simple. Every scene of the day, scene after scene after scene after scene, situations, people's behavior, they're not always my way. Right now, we're going through a crisis outside in the world. But if I create a thought which is peaceful in nature, in my response to the situation and to people's behavior, then my response is out of my original nature of peace. And when I'm creating that response, I am creating peace, I'm experiencing peace, I am radiating peace. But if I do the opposite, and I create my reaction through stress. I create my reaction through irritation. I create my reaction through anger, through impatience. Then I'm creating the opposite of peace. And we need to remember this, that we are contributing to creating the opposite of peace when we respond to situations through these uncomfortable emotions. And when majority of us created this stress, anger, anxiety, and we radiated it on the planet, then it was not only we who were not at peace, it's the universal vibration of the world which is not at peace. Because my mind is not just my mind, it is a part of the world mind. If you put all the minds together, you know, so that's where the ocean is, put all the minds of the planet together. So you put seven, 800 crore minds together, that's the world mind. And my mind is one of that world mind. So whatever vibration I create, it is not just inside. It's radiating to the world mind. It is radiating to the global consciousness of the planet, the vibration of the planet. So the drop influencing the ocean and the drop also getting influenced by the ocean. Yes, the message I'd like to share, and it comes from my own lived experience uh, over many years now, is that the most joyous and deeply satisfying thing any of us can do is to commit our lives to this cause of love and peace building, of building a world in which everybody can flourish. Um, and so uh, if you're a young person uh, deciding where you want to dedicate your time and energy in your life, I'd say dedicate it to this global movement to build a more peaceful, more loving world. Uh, that starts with developing the gifts you've been given. And all of us have gifts 
uh, of mind and heart and spirit, uh, put those to a noble purpose and, uh, and become a leader. Uh, and I, my experience is that we can lead from wherever we are within our families, within our communities, within our, our organizations at work. And we can lead from any level in the organization because everything we do every day pushes our culture uh, in the right direction or the wrong direction. So push it in a life-affirming direction. Uh, this is the most exciting time, I think, uh, in the history of the world. We have the knowledge and resources and technology to build a world where everyone can flourish. But we also have the, the capacity to use that power destructively. Uh, today's young generations will decide which it is. Uh, and uh, I just pray uh, that uh, enough of us will commit to using the, that power in life-affirming ways that we really can hand on to the generations that come after us a more peaceful world. There's a belief that for many people on this planet that when you die, you can go to a place called heaven. And I say, what's heaven? I say, well, each individual has their own definition. So it's each individual's version of heaven. And I want to suggest something based on the new biology and the physics. Uh, you don't die and go to heaven. You are born into heaven. This is where we came to create. And I say, when you are empowered and operating from your conscious mind and running your life, that's usually expressed in something called the honeymoon. When people let go of their programs and they, their life was blah, 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 and they meet somebody and 24 hours later, it's like, oh, it's so wonderful. Life is beautiful. Everything is beautiful. And I go, 24 hours after a whole life of blah, 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 what happened? I say, because as in the Honeymoon Effect book, what it talks about is this is the one time in your life where you stop playing programs and you stay mindful. Yeah. And I say, so what's the relevance? I say, the moment you stop playing the program, your life becomes heaven on earth. If we would all get the hell out of the program, then the whole planet would turn into the heaven on earth. So we would enjoy it a little bit differently than, uh, oh, okay, suffer through this, and you'll get something nice later. It's like, no, enjoy this now. This is the opportunity of where you have a device, a body, to create an experience. So if there's a heaven and it's a creation, this is where you can create it. And then you say, but it doesn't look like heaven. And then we go back and I say, yeah, but you've been programmed not to. And the moment you stop playing the program, when you fall in love, you actually did create heaven on earth. And that's available all the time, except you go back to the program and then you lose it. If I was going to make a, 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 a oscilloscope picture, you know, the, the vibration, love is a nice, smooth si uh, a sinus, you know, wave like this, you know, just a nice, smooth wave. Noise is like that. Harmony is in the sine wave, peace. And anything out of harmony starts to become jagged. And now it's, and it's that instead of that. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, the effort that you have of bringing meditation is to get them out of the jagged, yeah. put them into the sine wave. Because if they can manage this, then they have control. But if they get jagged, that means they lost the control. And now they're responding like a ping pong ball bouncing all over the place based on who's hitting it with a panel, paddle. Yeah wake up as many people as possible because the more of us that are broadcasting consciousness of he heaven, the more we will all collectively manifest it. So uh, I wish you luck on your effort because raising consciousness is the game. It's a great honor to be with you and celebrate uh, World Peace Day. And I was thinking as uh, I was uh, getting online to speak with you of the, um, of the uh, basic yamas and niyamas that are the basis of all, uh, 
all of our yogi tradition. And if you look at the niyamas uh, in order, uh, it all starts first with ahimsa. Ahimsa is the first yama, which means to be established in non-violence. And the great sage uh, Patanjali says, when we are firmly established in peace consciousness ourselves, then all beings around us cease to feel hostility. So you have actually to do nothing but be peaceful yourself and bring the presence of peace wherever you go. And if you do that, then people around you will feel peaceful, not by what you say, not by what you do even, um, but just by your presence. And that is the great gift of Patanjali when he says, the first lesson of yoga, he says, you know, uh, you start with ahimsa and then you start with satya. Satya is truth. And when you have satya added to ahimsa, you automatically have asteya. Asteya means you don't covet anything because you are totally fulfilled within yourself. You're totally fulfilled within yourself. And from that experience of asteya, non-stealing, non-covetousness, non-jealousy, um, comes what Patanjali says, aparagriyaha, which means uh, detachment from the fruits of action, which ultimately leads to the best use of your energy, your vital energy, your vital force. And so on World Peace Day, uh, I think uh, it is very appropriate for us to celebrate the great yogi traditions of India who also talk about the niyamas, cleanliness, sajna, uh, fulfillment that comes from self-study or swadhyaya, swabhadhyaya, or, um, you know, the, he, the effulgence that comes from the radiation of peace and ultimately results in what we call um, oneness with our source. So yoga is that tradition and everything we're doing in this world right now is the opposite of yoga. We're coming from the fragmented mind, from the ego mind, which uh, makes us look at ourselves as separate beings and then looks at the world also as separate when we are one with it. As you know, one of the greatest Mahavakyas is Tattva Masi. Um, whatever I see, I see pure consciousness. Whatever I see, I see the divine. Whatever I see, I see the infinite. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be a cup of coffee. This is a modified expression of the infinite. So, <laughs> when, on peace day, I think we should just be peace. We should speak peace. We should create peace. We should express peace. And we should celebrate peace. And if enough of us do this, then we'll have a peaceful world. Because I've seen enough peace activists, even Nobel Prize winners in peace, and they're not peaceful. So peace can only be created by those who are peaceful. Just like love can only be expressed by those who have received or given love. So in Mahatma Gandhi's words, we have to be the change we want to see in the world. And if there is a critical mass of that, and that's why we're having this conversation, then uh, hopefully we can reach a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier, and joyful world. Because right now, the world is very divisive, very quarrelsome, um, all within ideological conflicts, all the conflicts, whether it's communism, socialism, capitalism. These are good ideas meant for humanity, but human beings corrupt them because they come from self, selfishness, basically. Me, mine, everything is me, mine. But now that we are celebrating World, World Peace Day with this great heritage that you represent of India, then uh, it's possible by these changing these conversations and having uh, a critical mass participate in these conversations we can be the change we want to see in the world. So that is what, why I'm so happy to speak to you. 
Commonly, we think of peace as only a lack of violence between individuals, whether at a physical or mental or emotional level. Yet, even when we are totally alone, we often find ourselves restless and lacking in peace. When you are not at peace, is it possible to appreciate anything at all? Your restlessness will prevent it. When the mind is calm and ripple free, it can create. There is a sloka from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse 66, which inspires me greatly and deeply. Nasti buddhi yuktasya na chayu vaktasya bhavana na chavahoyetaha santir santasya kuta sukham. You know, it means there is no wisdom without harmony and without harmony there is no contemplation or vice versa. Without contemplation there cannot be peace. How can there be joy without peace? This is Lord Krishna saying. Peace and joy are innate qualities of the soul. But it is through meditation that we create the conditions that allow them to blossom. With the support of yogic transmission, the specialty of this path, the heartfulness way of meditation, it takes us on an inner journey in which we make a contact with the soul and pleasantly have our first real experience of peace. Try it. It is so beautiful that often we want to stay immersed in that peaceful state and never come out of it. But the world has to go on, so we come out. However, there is something even grander than remaining immersed in deep peace. By making that peace dynamic, we got to make peace dynamic and expressing it in action, we find that it can radiate and touch all those with whom we interact, thereby benefiting them as well. You know, there is quantum entanglement. Those who are associated with us, at mental, intellectual, emotional, spiritual level, they get entangled because of this. If you are restless, people who are in resonance with you will feel restless. If you are at peace, they too will feel peace. There is nothing mysterious about this aspect to understand. You have witnessed on many occasions how just one smile can lighten up everyone's mood. And you have witnessed its opposite as well. We must nurture good things and make them viral. Another facet of spiritual path is that peace is not the final aim of spirituality. When restlessness is absent or non-peace is absent, you feel since it is absent now I am at peace. When this restlessness starts to subside, we experience a great inner freedom and call it peace. In other words, our experience of peace is based on the comparison to the embedded memory of its opposite, the restlessness. But what happens when our restlessness dissolves completely, when it no longer exists, even in our memory? We now experience neither peace nor restlessness but arrive at a state of equilibrium. Instead of feeling peace, we become peace itself. Remember, instead of feeling peace, we become peace itself. That is my invitation to you on this International Day of Peace. 
with the participation of every willing heart, universal peace will surely not remain afar off. Herzliches Willkommen an alle und danke, dass du mit deinem Herzen und deiner Vision Frieden in der Welt ermöglichst. Stelle sicher, dass du in einer angenehmen Position sitzt und wir werden mit einer simplen Heartfulness-Entspannung beginnen. Sobald du entspannt bist, wirst du in die Heartfulness-Meditation geführt. Wir werden alle gemeinsam in Stille meditieren, so dass wir den Frieden spüren, der aufkommt, wenn wir unsere Aufmerksamkeit nach innen richten und tief in unsere Herzen eintauchen. Die Meditation ist beendet, wenn du »Das ist alles« hörst. Bitte bleibe dann noch für eine kurze Zeit ruhig sitzen, nachdem die Meditation beendet wurde um in dich zu spüren. Das hilft, um die Erfahrung zu absorbieren und die friedliche Atmosphäre auszuweiten, die sich aufbaut, wenn wir gemeinsam meditieren. Also, sitze bequem und schließe sanft deine Augen, sehr sanft und behutsam. Beginne mit deinen Zehen. Bewege deine Zehen und spüre nun, wie sie sich entspannen. Stelle dir die wohltuende und heilende Energie vor, die von der Erde in deine Zehen, Füße und Knöchel hinaufsteigt. Dann in deine Knie und deine unteren Beine. Fühle diese heilende Energie weiter deine Beine hinaufsteigen. Entspanne deine Oberschenkel. Entspanne nun vollkommen deine Hüfte, den unteren Körper und deine Taille. Erlaube deinem Rücken nachzugeben. Spüre, wie sich vom Steiß bis zu deinen Schultern der ganze Rücken entspannt. Entspanne deine Brust und Schultern. Du kannst deine Schultern fallen lassen und fühlen, wie jede Anspannung einfach dahinschmilzt. Entspanne deine Oberarme. Deine Unterarme, deine Handgelenke und Hände bis hinein in deine Fingerspitzen. Nun entspanne deine Nackenmuskulatur. Bringe deine Aufmerksamkeit hoch in dein Gesicht. Spüre, wie dein Kiefer nachgibt und lass jede Anspannung um deinen Mund, der Nase, den Augen, der Gesichtsmuskulatur, der Stirn gehen. Den ganzen Weg hinauf bis zum obersten Punkt deines Kopfs. Fühle, wie dein gesamter Körper völlig entspannt ist. Scanne dein System von oben bis unten 
und sollte da irgendein Teil deines Körpers immer noch angespannt, schmerzhaft oder unwohl sein, fühle, wie es für einen längeren Augenblick in die heilende Energie der Erde eintaucht. Wenn du bereit bist, bringe deine Aufmerksamkeit in dein Herz. Bleibe dort für einen kleinen Augenblick. Fühle dich eingetaucht in das Licht in deinem Herzen. Nun werden wir gemeinsam meditieren. Stelle dir vor, dass du von der Quelle des Lichts, die schon in deinem Herzen präsent ist, von innen heraus angezogen wirst. Entspanne dich sanft in dieses Gefühl. Wenn deine Aufmerksamkeit zu anderen Gedanken wandert, wehre dich nicht, aber unterhalte sie auch nicht. Lass sie einfach sein und erinnere dich einfach daran, dass du auf die Quelle von Licht im Herzen meditierst. Erlaube dir tiefer zu gehen. Bleibe in deinem Herzen versunken, bis du hörst, dass die Meditation endet.
das ist alles. Lass deine Augen für einen weiteren Augenblick geschlossen und spüre nach, wie du dich fühlst. Nimm das Gefühl von Frieden, das du gerade erfahren hast, vollkommen in dich auf. Stelle dir nun vor, dass sich dieser Frieden nach außen ausweitet, zu jedem und allem um dich herum. und die Welt umschließt. Wenn du deine Augen öffnest, nimm dir die Zeit, um diese Erfahrung zu genießen. Danke dass du den Frieden auf der Welt erweitert hast.